Hello. Today we will quickly review verb tense formation and then we'll learn some phrasal verbs. But first, let's learn some new vocabulary. Scuba diving. Scuba diving. Scuba diving is the sport of swimming underwater while breathing through a tube connected to a container on your back. A scuba diver. A scuba diver. This person is the person who does scuba diving. An air tank. An air tank. An air tank is a container of air that is on a scuba diver's back. A scuba diving mask. A scuba diving mask. A scuba diving mask is a piece of equipment made of rubber which covers a scuba diver's face. A piece of glass in the mask allows the diver to see. A flipper. A flipper. A flipper is a large flat rubber shoe worn by divers to help them swim faster. A snorkel. A snorkel. A snorkel is a tube which allows a person to breathe underwater. A person who uses a snorkel is called a snorkeler. Coral. Coral is a hard red, white or pink substance formed by the bones of tiny sea creatures. A coral reef. A coral reef. Coral reef is a line of hard rocks formed by coral found in warm sea uh, that isn't very deep. An atoll. An atoll. An atoll is a coral island formed in the shape of a ring or a moon. A shark. A shark. A shark is a large carnivorous fish that has several rows of very sharp teeth. A ray. A ray is a large flat sea fish with a long pointed tail. An octopus. An octopus. An octopus is a sea creature with eight tentacles or arms. A jellyfish. A jellyfish. A jellyfish is a round, transparent sea creature that sometimes stings people. A squid. A squid. A squid is a sea creature with a long body and long arms around its mouth. It has eight arms. A crab. A crab is a sea creature whose body is covered with a shell and has five legs on each side with two large claws on the front. A fin. A fin. A fin is one of the thin body parts of a fish that the fish uses to swim. Finally, a spear gun. A spear gun. A spear gun is a type of weapon used underwater which fires a pole with a sharp pointed end. Okay, let's go over these again. Scuba diving. A scuba diver. An air tank. A scuba diving mask. A flipper. A snorkel. Coral. And a coral reef. An atoll. A shark. A ray. An octopus. A jellyfish, a squid, a crab, a fin, and a spear gun. Verb tense formation. Now let's review verb tenses and how each tense is formed. The simple present tense is formed in this way. I eat. You eat. He, she, it, eats. We eat, you 
eat, they eat. I eat, you eat, he, she, it eats, we eat, you eat, and they eat. Now the verb after he, she, or it has a final S. For example, Yvonne loves to eat crabs. The present continuous is formed by adding ing after the verb. The girl is scuba diving. We form the simple past by adding ed to the verb. For example, Hank cleaned his flippers. However, there are many irregular verbs in the past tense. Here's an example. The, ex the experienced divers swam to the coral atoll. The past continuous is formed by using was, were, plus verb, plus ing. The fishermen were lowering their nets when the rain started. For the future tense, we use going to or will. Jack is going to collect some coral tomorrow. Ken will help him. We can also use the present continuous for future actions. For example, I am photographing the ray next week. To form the present perfect, we use have, has, plus past participle. Here's an example. We have dove here before. To form the past perfect, we use had, plus past participle. The coral had disappeared before the divers arrived. To form the passive, we use is or were or was or were plus the past participle. An example, the snorkel was stolen by Frank. Fragile verbs. Now we have many phrasal verbs. Let's begin with inseparable phrasal verbs. Inseparable phrasal verbs. Have a look at these examples on your screen. The ship's captain doesn't agree with the divers. This mask belongs to Marty. I don't care about going near the sharks. Coral consists of the bones of tiny sea creatures. Phrasal verbs are special verbs which are followed by a preposition. For example, in sentence one, preposition with follows the verb agree. Certain prepositions follow certain verbs. Some phrasal verbs are inseparable, meaning the preposition has only one possible position in the sentence. In most cases, it immediately follows the verb. For example, to agree with. I agree with you. In this group, the preposition doesn't change the meaning of the group. Phrasal verbs can be used in all verb tenses. I agree with you, I agreed with you, I am agreeing with you, etc. Let's look at some more inseparable verbs. Dream about. Karen dreams about killing a shark with her spear gun. Laugh at. The divers were laughing at the playful angelfish. Leave for. The snorkelers had already left for home when the jellyfish appeared. Listen to. Amateur divers should always listen to their instructors. Live with. Sometimes it is difficult to live with an avid diver. Look at. Look at those beautiful porpoises. Look for. Let's look for some crabs. Sit down. Walt should sit down and relax before he goes diving. Talk about. Let's talk about it first before we go to the atoll. Talk to. 
Rita should talk to her husband before she borrows his mask. Think about. The Brown family is thinking about snorkeling near Malta. Wait for. We must wait for our low tide before we begin our dive. Well, let's practice. There are a lot of new verbs to learn, so let's get started. Monica, what do you think about snorkeling? I love it. I'm always looking for someone to go with me. Great. Louis? I always laugh at them. They think they are real divers. I see. And Rosa? I like to sit down and watch them. It's a really interesting sport. It is. And thank you. And now it's time to look at and listen to these sentences. Look and listen. This air tank belongs to Jeff. More divers should care about the condition of the coral reef. Look at the fins on that fish. An octopus differs from a squid in the number of legs they each have. Read and repeat. Let's look at another kind of phrasal verb. For example, she should ask the Coast Guard about safety precautions. Some phrasal verbs can have a noun or a pronoun between the verb and the preposition. Let's look at some more examples of this kind of phrasal verb. Borrow something from someone. Bart borrowed the flippers from his brother. Help someone with. A diving instructor should always help his or her students with their gear. Lend something to someone. Can you lend your air tank to Connie? Remind someone about. Don't forget to remind Patty about the diving party on Tuesday. Remind someone of. You remind me of your father with your love of diving. Let's practice. Lewis, do you think Monica would look good in scuba diving gear? No, she should ask me about a new hobby. You're so funny. Rosa, what about Lewis? He might look all right. I'm sure he would do something wrong. You would have to help him with his gear. Probably. Monica, what about me? Be nice. You would look great. You would remind me of the people in the area. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. And now, with your help, we will look and listen. Look and listen. I need to borrow an air tank from someone. Please ask Barb for her flippers. Don't forget to remind the divers about the sharks. Glenn always has to help his wife with her mask. Read and repeat. Let's look at another kind of inseparable phrasal verb. Have a look, please, at these examples. The diver lives near the sea. The diver lives on $500 a month. The snorkeler ran into the sea. The snorkeler ran into an old friend. 
There are many phrasal verbs in which the preposition changes the meaning of the verb. The meaning of the two words together is different from the meaning of the verb and the preposition by themselves. So they're different from prepositional phrases. In the first sentence, the place where the diver lives is near the sea. In the second sentence, the diver spends $500 a month. That is his income. In the third sentence, the snorkeler entered the sea running. But in the fourth sentence, the snorkeler met an old friend by chance. To run into means he met someone maybe on the street. Let's look at some more examples of this kind of phrasal verb. Come back. Is the diver going to come back? Now, come back means to return. Drop by. I hope the divers drop by with my equipment. Drop by means to visit. Get along with. Crabs don't get along with sharks. I get along with means to be friendly with. Get up. Andy is getting up early to go diving. Well, get up means to leave one's bed after sleeping or get out of bed. Go over. Let's go over the plan before we swim to the atoll. Go over means review. Grow up. Cute little sharks grow up to be big sharks. Grow up means to become an adult. Look after. Professional divers should always look after amateur divers. Look after here means supervise or help. Look like. Tom looks like an octopus in his diving gear. Look like means to resemble. Stay up. Don't stay up late. We have to dive early tomorrow morning. Stay up means to remain awake or not go to bed. Take care of. Please take care of your gear when you finish snorkeling. Take care of means to put away or to maintain. Let's practice. What do you think of sharks, Lewis? I don't plan on getting together with any sharks soon. They're much fun. You're right. And Monica? I stay up some nights thinking about sharks. I don't like them. I don't like them either. And Rosa? I don't think I would get along well with sharks. I would probably make a good supper for them. Thank you. And now we will come back after we look and listen. Look and listen. The divers came back early because of the icy water. We should drop by Hal's house and see if he has some flippers. Herb has to get up early if he wants to go diving. They should go over the plan before diving near that island. Read and repeat. Now let's look at separable phrasal verbs. Separable phrasal verbs. For example, I called up the diver and I called the diver up. Well, separable phrasal verbs have the same verb and preposition, verb and preposition combination. However, with this type of phrasal verb, the noun object may come after the preposition or between the verb and the preposition. 
a pronoun objects must come between the preposition and the verb. For example, I called him up, not I called up him. This is not right. We cannot do that ever. So in the first sentence, the noun object is after the preposition. I called up the diver. In the second sentence, the noun object is between the verb and the preposition. I called the diver up. Some other examples of this type of phrasal verb are drop off. Could you drop off my mask tomorrow? Could you drop my mask off tomorrow? To drop off means to take something or someone somewhere and then leave that person or that thing in that place. Figure out. I can't figure out this map of the atoll. I can't figure this map of the atoll out. To figure out means to understand or to solve. Find out. Charles found out the diver's number, or Charles found the diver's number out. To find out means to learn or to discover. Help out. Please help out Fanny with her diving gear. Please help Fanny out with her diving gear. To help out means to assist. Pick out. Did Ralph pick out some new flippers yet? Did Ralph pick some new flippers out yet? To pick out means to select. Try out. We should try out the new snorkels. We should try the new snorkels out. To try out means to test. Wake up. The waves woke up the diver. The waves woke the diver up. Now to wake up means to cause someone or something to stop sleeping. Let's practice. Rosa, what should a crab always do? A crab should always wake himself up before the sharks and jellyfish get up. You're right. And what should a shark always do, Monica? A shark should always have the little fish out. It shouldn't eat all the little fish. Good. Lewis, what should an octopus do? An octopus should always take a scabbage out that will give the other fish something to eat. You have a great sense of humor, Lewis. Thank you all. Now I want you to try out this look and listen. Look and listen. The angelfish is bringing its children up well. Bill called Bob up to go diving. I hope the divers can work the problem with the tide out. Let's try these new masks out. Read and repeat. Now let's look at some more examples of separable and inseparable phrasal verbs. Firstly, some separable phrasal verbs. Call back. Have the snorkelers called you back yet? To call back means to telephone again. Get back. Lyle got back his lost flippers. Lyle got his lost flippers back. To get back means to receive. Point out. The dive instructor pointed out that the divers shouldn't dive near the coral reef. To point out means to indicate or to show. Take off. The Johnson family took off for their diving holiday. To take off means to leave. Now some inseparable phrasal verbs. Firstly, we have check into. The snorkelers checked into their seaside motel. To check into means to enter 
or to register. Come across. Did you come across your mask yet? To come across means to find. Go over to. Let's go over to the atoll before we dive. Go over to means to travel to. To look into. We should look into the price of diving gear before we pick up a new hobby. To look into means to get information. Put up with. Sharks have to put up with all the little fish swimming near them. To put up with means to tolerate. Well, let's practice now. Rosa, is there anyone in your family who would like to go diving? There are many beautiful places to go diving near Mexico. I came across some old diving gear in our basement. I don't know who it belonged to. Okay. And Monica? My sister looked into it once. There are many places in Poland to go diving. All right. Louis? My sister likes to dive. She's always taking days off from work to go diving. I'm sure she has a good time. Thank you. Now I want you to check into this look and listen. Look and listen. Did you call the diving instructor back yet? The snorkeler pointed the best places to snorkel out. The boys took off three days from school to go diving. It's difficult to put up with being married when you always want to go diving alone. Read and repeat. Review. Well, now let's do some exercises reviewing verb tense formation. Uh, Lewis, can you give us a sentence in the present perfect and tell us how the present perfect is formed? Ken has been a diver for many years. The present perfect is have uh, or has plus past participle. Good. And Rosa, can you give us one with the present continuous? Yes. Jeff is cleaning the diver's mask. The present continuous is the verb ing. Great. Monica, one with the simple past. The shark ate the squid. The simple past is verb plus ed. Unfortunately, we have lots of irregular verbs and ate is a regular yeah, verb. Unfortunately, that's true. So you just have to learn the irregular past tense verbs. Now let's do an exercise with inseparable phrasal verbs. Now, I'm going to give you the end of a sentence and I want you to begin it with an appropriate subject and phrasal verb. Lewis, you can go first. Their diving plans for the summer. Okay, what do you think? Parents were talking about their diving plans for the summer. Okay. The parents were talking about their diving plans for the summer. Parents were talking about their diving plans for the summer. Excellent. Monica, you can do this one. Okay. Let's put the line at the atoll early in the morning. What do you think should go in there, Monica? The crabs left for the atoll early in the morning. The crabs? Sure, they were going to get some crab meat. Okay. The crabs left for the atoll early in the morning. And Rosa, you can do the last one. Something there. The rest of the divers to get on board. 
The instructors were waiting for the rest of the divers to get on board. Okay, the instructors were waiting for the rest of the divers to get on board. The instructors were waiting for the rest of the divers to get on board. Good job, everyone. Okay, so now let's do another exercise using phrasal verbs with a noun or a pronoun between the verb and the preposition. So please fill in the blanks using this special type of phrasal verb. Rosa, you go first. You should something there when putting on your air tank. You should ask the instructor for help mm -hmm. when putting on your air tank. Good. You should ask the instructor for help when putting on your air tank. Monica, this one is for you. The instructor should something sharks when diving near a coral reef. The instructor should remind his students about sharks. Okay. The instructor the instructor should remind his students about sharks when diving near a coral reef. And Lewis, you can do the last one. Theo must what? Buying a new diving mask. What could we put in there? Theo must ask his father about buying a new diving mask. Must ask his father about. Okay, Theo must ask his father about buying a new diving mask. Great. Thank you. Now, let's do an exercise using separable phrasal verbs. Now, each of you give us two sentences using one separable verb. In the first sentence, you can separate the verb. In the second sentence, don't separate the verb. Rosa, you're a shark. Lewis, you're a crab. Monica, you're an octopus. Okay, Rosa, you can go first. Okay. I need to pick a test at our voice out for dinner. Uh-huh. I need to pick out a test at for dinner. Very good. Lewis. I want to try my new clothes out. I want to try out my new clothes. Very good. Monica. I'm going to pick, up, pick my stockings up later. I'm going to pick up my stockings later. That will be a lot of stockings. Yeah. Thank you all. Now let's do one more exercise. Please fill in the blanks with the appropriate prepositions after the verb. Okay. So, Monica, you can go first after I've cleaned the board. And so just remember, appropriate prepositions after the verb. <laughs> my father came something, my old diving photos. My father came, my old diving photos. My father came across my old diving photos. Good. My father came across my old diving photos. This means discovered or he found. Okay, Rosa, you can do this one. The instructor pointed something. The beautiful ray. The instructor pointed out the beautiful ray. Good. The instructor pointed out the beautiful ray. And pointed out here means showed. Lewis, the last one is for you. Let's swim something to the coral reef. Let's swim over to the coral reef. Wonderful. Let's swim over to the coral reef. That's like go over by swimming. Wonderful. You've all been just great as usual. Now it's time to listen and write.
Listen and write. Listen and write the sentences. Number one. Steve always dreams about diving off an atoll. Number two. Divers depend on each other for support. Number three. Look at that red crab. Number four. Dick should ask Dan for help with his air tank. Number five. Let's go over the diving instructor's manual. Number six. We stayed up late to watch the sunset over the atoll. Number seven. Jen called Patty up to see if she wanted to go snorkeling. Number eight. You should think it over before you go deep sea diving. Number nine. Didn't you give Alan back his flippers? Number 10. Did you come across your diving mask? Now, check your work. Number 1. Steve always dreams about diving off an atoll. Number 2. Divers depend on each other for support. Number three, look at that red crab. Number four, Dick should ask Dan for help with his air tank. Number five, let's go over the diving instructor's manual. Number six, we stayed up late to watch the sunset over the atoll. Number seven, Jen called Patty up to see if she wanted to go snorkeling. Number eight, you should think it over before you go deep sea diving. Number nine, didn't you give Alan back his flippers? Number ten, did you come across your diving mask? Now read the story and answer the questions that follow it. Read and answer. The Blue Sea Diving School belongs to Marty Burns. It consists of four levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced and expert. When you first look at the school, it doesn't look like much. However, if you ask someone about the school, most will say it is the best diving school on Verne's Beach. Marty grew up on Verne's Beach. After he moved out of his parents' house, he decided to open the school. He stayed up many nights making plans and thinking about which instructors to hire. He picked his instructors out carefully. He talked the building plans over with his father. His father pointed out several problems with the construction and these were soon taken care of. The construction began in 1998 and it has been full steam ahead ever since. Today, Marty's school has over 400 students and 11 instructors. If you are ever at Verne's Beach, you should go over to Marty's school. Even if you don't want to sign up for lessons, Marty will always offer you a cup of tea. Now listen and answer the questions. Number one, who owns the Blue Sea Diving School? Number two, how many levels does he have? Number three, what do most people think about the school? Number four, when did Marty decide to open the school? Number five, why did Marty stay up many nights? 
Number six, what did he talk over with his father? Number seven, what did his father point out? Number eight, when did the building construction begin? Number nine, how many students are enrolled at Marty's school? Number ten, what will Marty offer you if you stop by? Now, check your answers. Number one, who owns the Blue Sea Diving School? Marty Burns owns the Blue Sea Diving School. Number two, how many levels does he have? He has four levels. Number three, what do most people think about the school? They say it is the best school at Verne's Beach. Number four, when did Marty decide to open the school? He decided to open the school after he moved out of his parents' house. Number five, why did Marty stay up many nights? He was making plans for his school. Number six, what did he talk over with his father? He talked the building plans over with his father. Number seven, what did his father point out? He pointed out some problems with the construction. Number eight, when did the building construction begin? It began in 1998. Number nine, how many students are enrolled at Marty's school? There are over 400 students at Marty's school. And number 10, what will Marty offer you if you stop by? Marty will offer you a cup of tea. See you next time. Bye-bye. Practicing English. Good morning, guys. Hey, David. Hi. Morning, Dave. What's going on today? We were just talking about our favorite summer memories. Really? Yeah, I didn't know this about Carrie and Monica, but they used to do a lot of camping and backpacking when they were kids. Oh, really? I didn't know that either. How did you girls get involved in camping and backpacking? Well, for me, I had lots of older brothers, and I thought it was brave and somewhat daring of them to go off with the Boy Scouts. On front nights, they would pack all their gear and equipment. And on Saturday mornings, they would go off to wild spots around our area. Where did they go? Well, all around our area, there was still a lot of forests, so they used to go around three hours north of us. On Sunday nights, they would return home with stories of seeing bears, fishing, and catching their dinner in the lake. They loved trout fishing. So it all seemed so exciting. Of course, when I was old enough, I got ready with my sleeping bag and my tent, and I want to have adventures of my own. So tell me, what is your, one of your best memories of getting out there in the wilderness? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. You're looking good today. Thank you. What would you like to have today? Um, I'll have some peach juice. It's okay. I'll have a coffee. Okay. Coffee, please. Okay. I'll have a coffee too, thanks. Okay. Oh, and cookies too. Okay. Hmm. My mum wanted me to be a proper little girl. Dresses and dolls and all that. However, I just wasn't that interested. So I'd come back from these camping adventures and I'd tell her about all the fun I had. What is your most memorable camping adventure? Hmm. One time I convinced her that her and I could go together. I had a great tent, and my brothers were off in college, so I could use the equipment that was still in the garage. So, your mom went camping with you. What happened? Yes, I convinced her that we could do it, and she came with me. But it was a disaster. Oh, why was it so bad? What happened? Everything. We got to our campsite, and it was great. However, my mom didn't know how to do anything. It took a while to get set up. Just as we had a campfire going and put the tent up, we had a huge downpour. It rained all weekend. That sounds awful. Yep, but it gets worse. How bad? 
Well, besides the rain, we had a big adventure. Coffee? After midnight, it's for you. we heard a noise. And sure enough, there was a bear out there. We threw a backpack full of food and then ran the opposite direction. We spent the night in the car, scared to death. It was horrible. That sounds really awful. Yeah, it wasn't much fun. We tried to keep dry and had all the remaining food on Saturday. Ended up driving home on Saturday night. On Sunday morning, when we got home at three in the morning, it was still raining. Did your mum ever go camping again? No way. She hated it. She'll never go again. Well, I can't blame her. It was not a good experience. Well, who is your favourite person to go camping with? Uh, well, my older brother Paul is a great camper. Loves to build campfires. He's always a good campfire cook and storyteller. He's always trying new ways to grill the fish that we catch. He's an all right great outdoor kind of guy. When will you go camping again? Well, that's a good question. Why? I haven't been camping in a while. And I would really like to get outside and sleep under the stars, swim in a river, catch my dinner in a lake. I was thinking of asking if you guys wanted to go with me sometime. I think that sounds great. Yeah, me too. What about you, Tarek? Me? No way. Why not? I'm still thinking about your bear story. No way do I want to end up as a bear's dinner. <laughs> <laughs>